Mora Shavua Tov, it's Matsui Shabbos Parshas Vayeshev, and the third night of Hanukkah. I know it's late. It's past 10 o'clock at night, Matsui Shabbos. So, um, it's in the Gemara. You won't uh, stretch it out too long. Okay, we're up to the Mishnah, Daflamid Zayin Amid Aleph. So we learned the concept of a tam and a muid the first couple of times, first three times you're a tam. And the last, the fourth time already comes a muid. So the animal gores, you have to pay the full guards. The owner should be aware that the animal is a muid be much more careful. Now the discussion is, what about if the animal is a muid for a specific type of animal? Do we say that the muid is only limited to that type of animal? For example, the animal only gores camels. Do we say that the animal is only a mood for camels and the owner should have been more aware and you paid the full damages, but if it goes ahead and damages a goat, you only pay half damages? Or once we've established the animal is a mood, it's a mood for everyone. So the Mishnah says, the Mishnah itself is a bit cryptic, as we'll see in the Gemara. There's an argument between Rappapur and Bizvid how to understand the Mishnah. The Mishnah says, Shoy shehu mood of Lamed Zayin Omad Aluf, Shoy shehu mood leminoi, if the shoy, let's say, is a habitual gore when it comes to some an animal similar to itself, let's say a cow, but the but it doesn't gore other animals. Now here we have a fundamental argument between our papa and Abbasid, whether we read the way in, in the way that in our text, which is the animal, and it has proven that it's not a mood. In other words, as soon as the animal is a mood for one particular type of animal, it gores whatever an animal is, we'll assume it's a mood in every respect. Unless the animal is proven to us when it comes to goats, it doesn't attack goats. But as, far, as long as the animal hasn't proven to us it doesn't attack goats, to attack three cows, and then attacks a goat, you pay full damages because you're a mood. And that's what the mission is trying to teach us. That once you're a mood for that's from a puppet deletes the vote, and therefore he reads it for sure. It's not a move for anything else. You don't have to prove it, okay? As for well, sure, is a move, and it's not a move to any minority, depending which way you want to learn. Or another example, if an animal is a muid for a person, we learned during the base of the base that a person has a malach, a mazel, and or an animal is scared of a person. And therefore, if an animal is, let's say, a muid for another animal, doesn't mean that it will be a muid for attacking people. It might be scared. But if it's a muid for attacking people, then it should be a muid for an animal. And the mission says, muid la adam, vi ain't a muid la behema. It's a muid to a person, and it is not a muid to a behema, which, uh, according to Rav Zvid, it would mean that automatically, if it's a muid to a person, it is a muid to a behema. Unless we know vi ain't a muid, we know for a fact that it's not. How we learn a puppet, some people learn a puppet and a puppet agrees to have a sweet of disrespect when it comes to a person. The animal is a mood for a person, and surely it's a mood for other animals as well. And he'll agree with Rabbi Zvid's understanding that if an animal is a mood for a person, it's a mood for everything. Mood like Tanim, if the animal is a mood for young ones, ain't no mood like the, not for older ones. Rashi learns, we're talking about animals. If the, animal, if the cow, let's say, gores calves, doesn't make it a mood for large animals, or according to Rabbi Zvid, and we know that's not interested in larger animals. Other people, are, other learners are talking about Tanya means kids versus adults, people. Whichever animal is considered a mood for, it pays full amounts. It's only half amount. They then turned to Rabbi Yehuda and he said, tell us, is it such a concept that an animal is only gores on Shabbos, the ain't mood l'chol, is not gore during the week? Omelahem the Shabbos is Mishal Nezir Shalom said yes. So on Shabbos, if it gores an animal, it pays the full amount. But the Meisa Choyl, if it attacks an animal during the week, Mishal and Chatzin Nezir only half amount. Now, why should an animal treat Shabbos different than during the week? So Tosa says because on Shabbos we all dress nicely, and the animals don't recognize their own owners, their own owners, and therefore. It could be a muid on Shabbos, but during the week it recognizes its owners. Rashi says on Shabbos the animal is a day of rest, has a day of rest because he says in the Torah you're not allowed to work with your animal on Shabbos. So therefore, if there's a muid on Shabbos, Shabbos is the whole behavior is different. If the animal is a muid on Shabbos, doesn't make it a muid for during the week. Then the Mishnah continues. Um, Aim aside with Tam, how do you revert back to being a Tam? When we learned a while ago that if you, if the animal was a mood, but then three occasions the animal could have done the damage and didn't, it reverts back to a Tam. 
Three Shabboshim go back, to go by. And he doesn't attack any animals. That's it, reverse back to normal. Tracer asks, what's the finish? We already learned this concept. That three occasions go by. He doesn't perform, doesn't do his, his, its terrible thing. It reverts back. So Tracer says an interesting thing. That if you follow Rashi, who says that Shabbos is a day of rest, the Chiddush in the Mishnah is, what about Tuesday also? The animals are the animals work on Tuesdays. goes for a golf day. The animals are work on Tuesday. And comes a Tuesday, the animal doesn't damage. Can we say, look, the whole thing is the animal doesn't rest. And the whole thing is the animal rests. Well, Tuesday came by, it rested, and didn't cause any damage. So it's no longer a mood. So we say, no, Shabbos is different than the week. As the Rosh Hashanah explains, that Shabbos is something in the air. That the, the tide, we feel different in Shabbos. We have an extra in Shabbos, like Lerma Marbea. But um, the animal can feel and sense that it's Shabbos today. Not working is not what Shabbos is all about. Tuesday, you don't work. Sunday, we don't work. It's not Shabbos. It's a very different day. And there's something in the air that an animal feels. And for whatever reason, it drives the animal into a frenzy and causes damage. There's only a mood for Shabbos. So the Gemara, now we'll discuss this. Rabbi Zvid, Rabbi Zvid, Rabbi Zvid says, the ain't a mood. Add the vav. And we know for a fact that the animal is not a mood for other animals. And a papa says, ain't a mood. Delete the vav. And just learn, it happens to be that the animal is a mood for, let's say, goring cows. It is not a mood for anything else. But let's say, if we haven't proven that you're not a mood for any other animal, have a movie, or the assumption is you're a mood, and that's in fact the purpose of this mission. No, just because you're a mood for one animal doesn't automatically make you a mood for others. The stumble have a mood, not a mood. Rabzvid Dayik Mesefer, Rabzvid proves his point from the end of the mission, and a papa Dayik Mesefer at the beginning. Let's go first, Rabzvid. Rabzvid, I say, Tony says, Mood, a if you're a mood for young animals, calves, ain't a mood, you're not a mood for larger animals. Right now, if you learn like I say, that generally you are a mood unless you prove otherwise. So the chiddush of the mission is that you are a mood. If, if, that if you're a mood for one, you automatically move for another. And so the chiddush, you're a mood for small calves. Maybe you're not intimidated by small calves. Maybe this cow is intimidated by larger animals. And yet the law is you're a mood for one type of animal, you move for them all until proven otherwise. That's a big chiddush. Then you move to I have a mood. How come out the chiddush of the mission is that feel the mictan and the that even from a, a, a goring calves. To becoming a mood also for larger animals, Nami, Mistama have a mood. Generally, assumption is you're a mood. And the EM, if you learn like our papa says, obviously, that, or, that generally you're not a mood for anything else other than what you damage. So when the Mishnah says that, that um, ain't a mood, what's the Kiddush? Of course, if you're not a mood, if you're only a mood for, for young calves, of course you're not a mood for large ones. If, if you're not a mood for one type of say, a goat, if you're a mood for a goat, you're not a mood for sheep, even though they're similar. And so surely if you're a mood for a calf, you're not a mood for a large animal. What's the point of the mission? So Rabbi Zavid uses that to prove his point. It's generally, if you're a mood for one type of animal, you're not a for another. So tell me logic. From one small animal to another, we say you're not a mood. The way that Papa learns, generally you're not a mood. So from a young, from a calf to a large cow, you need to tell me the law have a mood that's not a mood. Of course not. But if you learn my way, that generally you are a mood straight away. And the Kiddush mission is that even in a case from a small one to a big one, you are a mood. That's a big Kiddush. But our papa, my papa says, no, there is a Kiddush involved. It's if we need it. So I would have thought, from one type of animal to another type of animal, you don't make that leap and say you're a mood for, for this animal, you're a mood for that. But within the same species of animal, if you're a mood for a small one, maybe that kind of animal doesn't bother you, and therefore you're a mood, or bothers you to the extent that you go into this frenzy. Maybe large animals also you'll attack. And the mission has to tell you that you're not. I would have thought, since you already breached that particular species, and you therefore you broke through it and you're goring, it makes no difference. His, he brings his proof from the beginning of the mission. It says, If you're moved for a person, you're not a mood to behemoth. So the way that Papa learns means that you're not a mood to behemoth. The way that um, the way that we learn is if you're a mood to an Adam, you are a mood to him, unless proven otherwise. And the obvious question is if that's the Kiddush in the Mishnah, that you're a mood to an Adam, that you are automatically a mood to him, of course. An Adam is far more intimidating for, for an animal than another animal. So, uh, what's the point of the Mishnah? If you can learn that what? The way I learned ain't a mood, which means generally an animal is only a mood limited to whatever damage he did. How can master the Mishnah teach you that if you're a mood, you a person's an animal, generally you're not a mood by itself. Eliam, you can tell me, the ain't a mood, the above. 
Hostama, but generally speaking, is a mood. What's the Kiddush? Of course, if you move it for a person, you move for an animal. You hold that from one animal, saying, I'm a move for donkeys. I become a move for all other animals. You need to tell me that if you move it to grow people, you're a move to animals. Remember, a person has a malach that protects him, or they have a mazel, but the animal is not worried. Surely, he won't be worried about other animals. Rabbi Zvi, will tell you, Reisha Achazorika. He said, you misunderstood the mission. The beginning of the mission is not talking about a normal case. If you're a mood for one, for one, of course you move for everything. You know what the mission is talking about? What happens if you're a mood for a person, which makes you a mood also for animals? And then three occasions occurred that you that this animal encountered other animals and didn't do any growing, which we learned before that cancels the mood. But the problem is, but he's still a mood as far as people are concerned, because we haven't had the opportunity yet to test this animal, how the animal will behave, how the animal will react. So the question is, when can we repeal the mood from uh, goring other animals while there's still in place the mood for goring people? Or do we say the Kalbuchema tells us definitely we'll continue goring? And just because there's an anomaly that these three animals he didn't gore at, he didn't gore to gore. Amlach Reisha Achazorka. It's not a case where you trying to uh, remove the mood. You're going to have a mood, or the mood, the mood, the mood for everybody. And then the mood, then three occasions happened, did not damage an animal. The koi gabi behema plus is even standing three times, and the didn't cause any damage. Mawatem, I would have thought, even the hod the since he did not change from a person, chazora the behema lab chazori, I would have thought that the can that you cannot cancel the mood of behema if you didn't cancel the mood of a person, because we know if you're this animal is not worried about if you're concerned about goring a person, surely we'll gore animals. Kamashlan, and that's a chiddush mishnah. Chazora the behema be a chazora havi. We prove it as not an animal. The ain't a mood the behema. Prove it is not a mood for animals. We accept it. It just remains a mood for people. Makes a question on, on Rabbi Zvi. It's Sumcha, so I'm a Sumcha says, Mu with the other Mu the Behemoth. That if you're a Mu, it's a person that might be Mu to Behemoth, Kabo Chaim and Logic. Ma, the other Mu, the Behemoth coach can appear. This animal is going to go, people sure will go to animals. And the Tanakama argues with Sumcha, which means, McLeod Tanakama, what does Tanakama hold? Just because you're a Mu for people does not mean you're a Mu for animals. Exactly like our Papa said. That we don't just make that leap. Question on Rabbi Zvi. Amale Maklaz and Kama any will come holds no mood. As the Gemara of the Razid, Sumchis Achazorika. I already told you that this per thing of other behemoth is talking about we were trying to remove the mood from the animal because three animals went by, didn't go. And this is the argument of Sumchis and the Chachamim. How the Kamala is with Tanakama. The Kamala, you say Chazorah the Behema Chazori, you hold that if you do it three occasions that the animal encounter other animals didn't go. It removes the muet from the animal. I disagree. I hope it's not a chazor. Why? Since it still remains a muet for people, surely it will cause damage to animals. It didn't change from people, surely it didn't change from uh, animal. Come in here. I'll prove to you that Zvid is right. And this, therefore, because of Ashi tries to support Rav Zvid, there are a number of opinions that say the halach of Rav Zvid. Um, uh, it says in the Mishnah, they said to Rabbi Yehuda, the students of Yehuda said, Mu'ad for Shabbos, there ain't a Mu'ad for Shabbos, not a Mu'ad for the week. I'm going to answer Rabbi Yehuda's response. The Shabbos is Mishalem Nezik. Shalom, and my Zechel is Mishalem Chatz Nezik. For Shabbos, you pay full Nezik, Mu'ad, and the weekday, you pay only half. Now, let's understand the Mishnah. If you learn like Rabbi Yehuda, that if you're moved for one, automatically you move for others. So they asked us, so what about Shabbos? This animal is moved for Shabbos. Do we automatically assume the moved for the weekdays as well? Now, Shiyula, who did Koshad, we're asking that very question. We follow Rabbi Zvi, you're moved for one, you're moved for all. What about Shabbos versus the weekday? And who now make a matter? The answer is no, that's different. The Shabbos is different than weekday, and the move to Shabbos is not a move for the weekday. Eliyam, you can tell me, ain't a move to anything. You're to pop it. If you're moved for one, does not make you move for anything else, which means if you're moved for Shabbos, then you're not a move for the weekday. So, what exactly? So, they were not asking him a question. They were t- t- telling him halacha. He doesn't know the halacha. They were teaching him halacha that if you're moved for Shabbos, you're not a move for weekday. That's the rule. If you're moved for one, you're not moved for another. And so, he might come What's he answering now? What's his answer? That a move pays full nazik. We all know that. In fact, from the beginning, we shall support our speed as well. The Tony said that Shemud, like Misham, those who are moved, you pay half full. You pay half full. That's any move, like Misham, has that. And for a time, you pay half. The mission needs to inform us that we learned that so many times before. The purpose of the mission is to tell you that 
as long as you did not prove that the animal is not a mood, it automatically becomes a mood in every respect, in every sphere. The mission explained and therefore the consequences are you pay full magic versus half. Eli Ahmed ain't a mood, Johnny. The mission is out to tell you that you're moved for one, you're not a mood for anything else. Why tell us what a mood pays in the common time? They don't know that. Hoshka, that's the track of the mission. Why bother talking about that? Ad hash until this page, Loy Ashmi and didn't we know that a Tam Mishal of Khatinezik, Tam pays half and a Mu Mishal Nezik Shal? So therefore, the proof to Rabbi Zvid. And then the Gemara concludes. The Eim Tim to Loy Menami Isra Papa. And if you want to follow a Papa, I'll just tell you two things, Gemara. What happens if Nogach Shur Chamoy Vagam? Animal gourd, a cow, a, a donkey, and a camel. So one of each. But gored three times. So it shows now the animal is not discriminating against any particular animal. He attacks everybody. The Nasim would have called the Nira Papal agree, you're a Muad in all respects. And because of this, the Tim Sulaim, the Reef and others rule like, was others rule like Rav Papa. So the Gemara, tell them what we learned. Now we learn that if, we, if there are patterns, it doesn't have to be consecutive, it could be patterns of progression. So for example, tell them what we learned. Roshay Nogach. We saw a shirt that gores and a donkey that doesn't. Sus nogach, a horse that gores and a gummel and a camel that doesn't. Petted nogamul that gores, odor like nogach and a wild donkey that doesn't. Nasimu in the synagogue. In other words, he met this animal that gores, the next animal met didn't gore. Met this animal that gores. So it basically it gores alternative animals. It becomes, there's a pattern. It becomes a muid, the sirugin, um, sorry, I skipped a line. Turn about it, go back a line. Sorry, turn about me, learn three lines in the bottom. Roshar Nogach, it, it gored one cow, and then the following Shar Loy Nogach, it didn't gore. Shar Nogach, it gored another cow, then Shar Loy Nogach, the following cow, it didn't. Shar Nogach, Shar Nogach. In other words, every second cow, it gores. Now, it's a mood with so it becomes, that's the pattern. So every second cow, it's a mood. So if after the sixth, in the, the, the third cow, the next cow it gored, you pay only half a nezik. The next cow after that, you pay the full nezik. Tell me what we learned. Roshar Nogach. Now we're going to talk about all sorts of animals. Saw a cow with gourd, the donkey didn't. Sus, Naga, a horse with gourd, and Gumbala Naga, camel didn't. Petted Naga, Arla Naga, mule did, and a wild donkey did. Nasimu in the Surugin. So we don't, so because it, it continued different animals, the move for all animals, like we just said before, but only the second, every second one. So now we're going to ask a fascinating question. Iboyilu, how do we read this pattern? We're talking about patterns now. So what happens? Nogach showed. Show it gored one cow, and then the next time it saw another cow, it gored again, and then the show the third cow would gored again. So now it was should establish it's a mood. And according to that papa, you're only a mood for cows, nothing else. But then, so we see from here also the Gemara follows our papa. That's how most Rishonim learn. But then, then the next time Chamoy, it saw donkey it gored, and then it saw gumbo camel and gored. How do we read this? The third show. Is that part of the pattern of only shows? If it is, then the Chamer and Gomer are only two animals and it's not a new pattern yet. Or do we say, no, the third show is the beginning of a new pattern that Shoy and Chamer and Gomer, so he killed, he gored three different animals, becomes a mood now. We ignore the first two shows that it did. Now, high Shoy Basra, Basra Shvodesh, and the third show is a continuation of the pattern of Shoy, by Katya Shvodesh, and Yai, so there was only a mood for our cows, the Midah Chinelay, but nothing else, Yai. Like Rab Papa says, you're only limited to the what you remove. I do my high shoy basra basa chamar gumshale. Or do we say that this third shoy now start a new pattern, shoy and chamar and gumbo? But yeah, either the cool meaning now it's a mood for all these things, chamar the gumbo. Okay, cool meaning for all species. Now the reverse. What happens first is chamar, then is gumbo, and then shoy shoy shoy. The, the third animal, which is a shoy, is that a continuation of the pattern of chamoy, or the animal now is changing, modifying the behavior, it only attacks shoy, because then it's shoy, then another shoy, another shoy. Mao. Hai shoy, kama, basa chamoy, gomish. The first shoy is a part of the pattern of the chamoy, gomish, the first muot in every respect. But yaida, the kula, means a muot for all animals. Ideal ma basa shvadim shudin lay. Or we say, no, that third, that third um, uh, shoy starts the pattern of only shoy. But kata shvadim yaida is only a muot for a cow's lamina chin lay but not for anything else. That was talking about boring animals. Now we're talking about dates. Shabbos, 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 and then Echem B'Shabbos, the Shabbos, Shabbos. It attacked three times on Shabbos, but then it also gored on a Sunday and on a Monday, the following, every, every week a different day. What happens then? So if it's um, establishing a mood for Shabbos, Sunday, Monday, that means the animal is a mood 
doesn't matter which day of the week it is. If we only follow follow the pattern of Shabbos, that's only a mood for Shabbos, but not for Sunday. And same question. Mao, how Shabbos besides the third Shabbos? Is that starting a new pattern, Shabbos, Sunday, Monday? But the Shabbos is delay goes that so the or do we say it's part of the first three Shabbos? It's only limited to a mood and Shabbos. Now, Katya, the Shabbos in the eye is only a mood for Shabbos, the most clearly I've been after weekday. I do more boss and echid, the Shabbos, the shame, the Shabbos in the way. Or we say, no, it's starting a new pattern. By Yaila the Kuli Yemen, therefore, it's a mood for any day of the week or the other way around. Hey, the Shabbos, the first time it goes a Thursday, and the next time is a Friday of Shabbos, and then Shabbos, then Shabbos, and then Shabbos. Mao, how do we treat that? Do we say, because you already started a trend, so it schleps that third animal as a part of the first trend, so this or it shows us it doesn't distinguish between Shabbos or a weekday. Um, if it's a move for any day of the week, or do we say, no, starting a new pattern, and this first Shabbos starts a new pattern just on Shabbos, so therefore the Shabbos of the eyes is only a move for Shabbos. Take with a good question. Nogach shoyed yom. Now it's interesting how an animal knows the days on our calendar, the lunar calendar. Um, how does he know how many days are is Unless some do with the moon, but it's still difficult to understand. But this will go. Nogach shoyed yom. What happens? You have a, a sequence of progressions. Nogach shoyed yom tezvah b'chayyazen. One month on the fifteenth day of the month it gored. The rest of the day it didn't. And the following month, the Yom Tezayin B'chaydish, on the 16th day of the month, it's good. And then the following month, the Yom Yud Zayin B'chaydish. So the question is as follows. He gored three times, but the progression was only two. The very first time he gored, the 15th day of the month, it wasn't part of a sequence of anything. It started a sequence. Then there was a, um, then the following time he gored was a month or a day later, and the following a month or a day later. Do we focus on on the, I guess, on the on the days that actually gored, so therefore there were three gorings, or we focus on the progressions, there's only two progressions. And that's an argument of Ramesh Mun. And this has to do with the laws of Nidda. If a woman is, is setting herself a, a cycle, a Vesas Kavur, a fixed cycle, and sometimes, you know, we have the day of the month, and there's three times, you know, three months, the same day of the month, that, that, that fixes a cycle. But what happens is progression. One month is the 15th, the following month is the 16th, the following month is the 17th. And if you have a Vesas Kavur, a fixed cycle, then you don't have to worry about any other time. And that particular day, you have to keep apart from, from, from each other. So do we look at three months or we need four months? The eight month we learned, Rosh, she saw Yom Tez Vav the 15th day of this month, the Yom Tez Zayim the 16th day of the following month, the Yom Yud Zayim the 17th day of the following month. Rav says, Kabbalah Vesas, that's a fixed time. Because we focus on the time that she saw, she saw three times. And each one a different day. Shmuel says, Ad she We need three <coughs> progressions you don't have. Same thing applies to the cow. Omar of it. What happens if Shama Ko Shoifer, the animal heard the sound of a Shoifer, the Nagach, and as a result, it gored. Then Ko Shoifer heard again the sound of a Shoifer, the Nagach, gored again. Ko Shoifer a third time, the Nagach. Na Semuah the Shoifers. It comes a Muad. If you ever hear the Shoifer, that the owner should know that the animal goes into a frenzy and should be aware. Sitting and pay and some wood, you pay fullness. You know what, what's the what are you telling us? It's obvious. No, Maud, I would have thought, Ha Shafer Kamas, you to Baumud the Nokta. The first Shafer, the animal was startled and therefore they reacted the way it did. It's not really part of the sequence. Come out for no, that it's the Shafer itself that drives the animal crazy, and therefore you have a sequence. Let's say the Mishnah. Shoy, we already had this before. Shoy shall ye throw if a, a shoy that belongs to ye should not go to the head. It's gored an animal that belongs to the base of Migdash. The base of Migdash has no owners, but it gored an animal. You have to pay, put funds in for the base of Migdash. Or shall Hegdish should not go to the head. Or the animal that belongs to Hegdish gored an animal that belongs to a private citizen. Potter. In both instances, you are part of why Shalema, because the posse where it talks about damaging, and it says that you have to the first three times your time, it says the expression shoyed ish as shoyed ayur, you gourd the animal of your friend. And Hegdish is not our friend. But loy shoy shal Hegdish. Hegdish belongs to Hashem. That's the first part of the mission. Next part. Shoyed shal Yisrael shenogach l'shoyed shal kenani. If the shoyed of a yid caused damage to the cow of a non-Jew, potter were exempt. But if Shal Kanani talk about while the Goyim lived in Israel and under our jurisdiction, the Shal Kanani Shnogach the Shoyish Yisrael, but for Goyim board the Shor of Eid, Bain Tam Bain Muad, Mishal Nulishom, you got to pay full nesin. 
The Rambam, we're supposed to more about the reason, but the Rambam explains because we follow their laws, and their laws are that if you have one animal tax another animal, the owners are not responsible, the animals went crazy. So therefore, when it comes to paying them, we follow their laws. And since they themselves don't enforce anyone to pay, so why should we pay them? But when they damage us, we follow our laws, and therefore they have to pay. But let's see, but the Algemar doesn't say that at all, and the Rambam just follows Yerushalmi. Algemar. First of all, Masnis in the Lake of Shemim Manasseh, our mission does not follow Shemim Manasseh. The Tanya, he learned, that if a shoy shall hegdi 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 if hegdi shall animal causes damage they're exempt shall hegdi shall hegdi shall hegdi only if it's an animal of a friend uh, that's, sorry, sorry that's the Tanakam Tanakam holds that if we attack hegdi shall hegdi attack us with potter like our mission but if shim manasya I mean True, but shall head you, shall head you, be time and move on the show. He holds that if we attack, head you got to pay, not just got to pay, but even the first time we pay the full amount. So, I mean, what I said, we don't understand the logic of Shimon Asya. Either Hegdish is included in the damages and has the same laws as us, either it's not included, then it should be totally exempt. Either way, why should we have to pay them? Michael Sobot of Shimon, what is his opinion? Either a you the terror says you damage a friend, Dafkim is only a friend, not Hegdish. Then I feel it shall head you, shall not shall head you the potter. Then even head it, attack head you, you potter. Because they're not really not a friend. Be either a love Dafka friend means anybody's so a loose term. Then I feel the Hegdish not me. If Hegdish attacks us, they should pay. Ki Nagar, the head you look high. The Hitema, are you going to tell me the following? That only if you damage your friend, and therefore, uh, if Hegdish, for example, damages us, they're pot. But if we damage Hegdish, we pay why? Based on logic. The Hegdish, the Hegdish, the Hegdish, the Hegdish, you know the reason is? The Mechai, you know why we have to pay? We should become Maisele, Mechai, and Hegdish, learn out from the logic of Hegdish. And then it goes as follows. Well, my Hegdish, the Hegdish, the Hegdish, the Hegdish, the Hegdish, the Hegdish, the Hegdish, you have to pay. It's kinogar the hegel. Don't you don't think it makes sense, it's right? That if we damage property of the base of meters, we should be paying. Sure, we should pay. But Sigma asks, but die you love me with kinogar. The rule is when you make a kalvachim, you want to learn something stricter for something more lenient, fine. But it cannot exceed the laws of the lenient. It can only be as strict as the lenient one. So since the lenient one, the hegit, you only pay half of the nezik the first three times, how can you then rule that by hegit you pay the full nezik? If it's a kavachem, it cannot be any stricter than the point of origin than where you're learning your halacha from. Malahal tam chatzinezik could buy a head yet you only pay half the amount. How can I'm a chatzinezik? Ella mishlag. The logic is the logic is very simple. Hakol hayi mechal nezik shom. The logic is the Torah says when it comes to paying the full money, there's no qualifications there about a you or not. It's only when it comes to a tam it mentions your friend. So in fact, it goes as follows. Hakol hoi bechal nezik shol. Everything was in, when it comes to muvid. There's no difference hegdish or not. So if hegdish, um, if you cause damage to hegdish, you got to pay the full amount. There's no qualification. So then, but like by time, the Torah answer to you, not because hegdish is lenient, uh, more lenient. On the contrary, hegdish is very strict. It's only we're lenient by hegdish. Hegdish, you still pay the full amount regardless. But for an ordinary person, you know what? The first three times you pay only half. Your friend, it's only your friend. But Hegdish remains the same as if it's a mood, which is the full amount. Because the Hegdish may time a mood, Mishan and Shal. Otherwise, if the din is that even by a mood, Hegdish is, 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 is excluded, then Nichtab Krala Haile Ayu got mood. And this clause, the Ayu, should have been inserted by the mood and say, even in the case of a mood, if it's Hegdish, you don't have to pay, then surely you don't pay by a top. So therefore, we know that you have to pay if you damage Hegdish, the full amount by a mood, so time is the same. But if Hegdish damages us, they don't have to pay. Why not? Because the Pasik says, Go who would be by love, you should go and warn the owners. And Hegdish has no individual owners. Hegdish like belongs to Hashem. Says the Gemara, okay, then the mission said, if we gore the animal of a goy, you are pot. Actually, we'll stop over here and 